Hello, Honors Algebra students, Mr. Lawrence here, and if you are watching this on April 3rd, congratulations to you, or even if it's April 2nd, you are way ahead of the game. It means you've mastered your factoring, and you don't need any more remediation on it. Some of your classmates do, unfortunately, but hey, we're going to get, get them where they need to be. But you're going to learn something from Topic 9. Topic 9 is going to be all about solving quadratics, okay? So... <clears throat> now, solving quadratics is different than solving linear equations. You know, we're not going to be, usually we're not going to be uh, using inverse operations and things like that. Usually we're going to be factoring. But before we get to it, let me, uh, let me cover up some of these problems here and just ask you to fill in the box for those problems. Write it down in your notebook. I know it's super simple. Okay, of course, the first problem would be 0, right? 0 times 5 is 0. And this next problem is negative 35 times. And, of course, the answer is 0, right? I know you know that. Very good. Okay, now solve for x. We've got x times negative 11 equals 0 and 15x equals 0. Well, hopefully, when you solve for x on the first one, if you didn't do it, go ahead and pause the video. You're going to get x equals 0. 0 divided by negative 11 is 0. Okay, and on the second one, you're going to get 0 divided by 15, which, of course, is 0. Why would I have you do such a simple problem before the lesson? Well, you see these problems here? One of the factors in each of these problems must be 0 for their product to be 0. So I've got a factor of x plus 2, and I've got a factor of x minus 5, right? One of those has to be zero. And some of you are going to go, well, I'll just put zero in for x. That's not what I said. I said the factor must equal zero. So in other words, x plus 2 must equal zero. Well, when does x plus 2 equal zero? When x equals negative 2. That's one of the solutions. But there's another solution. Because x minus 5 could equal zero. And that would happen if x equals 5. So you see this problem has two solutions to it. If x is negative 2, I get 0. If x is positive 5, I get 0. Take a look at this one. There's going to be two solutions again. First of all, the first quantity might equal 0, so therefore x minus 8 might equal 0. When will that happen? Well, that'll happen when x equals 8. I just solve for x. Or it could happen if 2x plus 7 equals 0. That would turn the whole product to zero, right? Well, when would that happen? That would happen when x equals negative three and a half, right? Because I would subtract seven from both sides, divide by two, negative three and a half. So there's the two solutions for that problem. Now, the, the interesting thing, the simple thing is, these problems here, this one and this one, they kind of look like answers to factoring problems, don't they? Oh, so to solve a quadratic, sometimes we can factor them and then find out when each of the factors equals zero. So why don't you watch me do a couple here? Have your pen ready. Do them with me. Okay, I've got a trinomial. There's no GCF other than one. I'm going to list the factors of A and list the factors of C. Okay, I know that I need to subtract my products to get negative seven. Let me see here. I got a 10 and I've got a 3, right? I've got a 3 and a 10. And to make that negative 7, I'm going to need a negative 10 and a positive 3. So when I go to factor, I'm going to have an x and a 2x. Little smile, big smile. And then I'm going to get a positive 3 here and a negative 5. Now don't lose your equal 0. So when will this expression equals 0. Well, let's see. It could equal 0 if the first quantity equaled 0, and that would happen if x equaled 5. I guarantee you, if you put 5 in for x, you will get 0 out. Here, let's do it. Let's see. If I put 5 in here, I'm going to get 25 times 2 is going to be 50, right? And then I'm going to get a minus 7 times 5, which would be 35. Then I'm going to get a minus 15. Look at that. Aren't there 35 and 15 negatives, which makes 50 negatives? And there's 50 positives? They canceled out. Holy shimoli, this stuff is easy. All right, now, there's another quantity here. 
this quantity might be the one equal to zero. So I can solve for x. And dividing by 2, I'll get x equals negative 1 and a half. So there's two answers. This quadratic equation equals 0 if x equals 5 or if x equals negative 1 and a half. Pretty crazy. All right, number two, same thing. Trinomial, no GCF other than 1. List the factors of A. List the factors of C. C is negative, so I have to subtract them to get negative 1. Ooh, I see 3. There's a 1 in there, sorry. And 4. To get negative 1, my 4 will have to be negative. My 3 will have to be positive. Let's factor it. Oops, that's supposed to equal 0. I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm going to get x and 3x. And I have the big smile and the little smile. So I'm going to put a 1 here. I want it to be positive so I can get the positive 3. And I'm going to put a 4 here, and I want it to be negative. If you're really smart, if you're really catching on, you're going to see that the equation equals 0 when x equals negative 1, or when x equals 1 and 1 third. Now, if you don't see it, go ahead and do it like I did it in the last problem. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, go ahead and try three and four on your own. Just a, just kind of a guided check. Pause the video, give them a shot, and then watch me solve them. Okay, here we go. I'm going to solve three. I'm looking for a GCF. I don't see one. Uh, going to list the factors of 20. 2, 10, 3, 4, and 5. Factors of 18. 2 and 9, 3 and 6. I'm subtracting to get 9. Let's see there, there's 15 and 24. Hey, those are nine apart on a number line, aren't they? There's a 15, and there's a 24. And I want a negative nine, so the 24 has to be the negative, right? I have to have more leftovers, more negatives left over than positives. So when I factor, I'm gonna get a 4x and a 5x. Big smile, little smile. And let me see, 5 is going to be multiplied by 3, and I want a positive 15. And then 4 is going to be multiplied by 6, and I want it negative. That equals 0. So now I can solve these two. I can solve 4x plus 3 equals 0, and 5x minus 6 equals 0. When I do that, you should get negative 3 fourths or 1 and 1 fifth. Six fifths, right? If you're not sure how to do that, call me over and I'll show you. Okay, number four, again, try it on your own. Here comes my solution. If you haven't tried it on your own, pause the video. Okay, I don't see a GCF other than one. Still checking for it though, not perfect square trinomials. Gonna list the factors, one and 28, two and 14, four and seven, and that's it. 1 and 5. Again, I'm subtracting because c is negative, and i got to get positive 13. Oh my goodness, look at this. I'm getting so good at factoring. There's 20. And here's 7. I want a positive 13, so I'll have a positive 20 and a negative 7. So this will factor as 4x and 7x. Little smile, big smile. The 7 got multiplied by a 1. Make it negative to get me a negative 7. 4 got multiplied by a 5. I need a positive 20. It'll be a positive 5. Okay, to show the work for solving. Okay, I'm not going to do it on every problem, but in case you don't get it yet, 4x minus 1 equals 0. Solve that for x. I'll let you do that. 7x plus 5 equals 0, and I'll let you do that. And you should get x equals 1 fourth or x equals negative 5 sevenths. There you go. This is pretty easy stuff. All right, so go ahead and try 5 and 6 on your own. I've got 7 and 8 for you to do too, but they're spread out a little bit. Okay, when you're ready, I'll show you the answers. Now we're going for the whole solution, so you got to factor, and then you got to solve each, uh, uh, each factor for when it equals 0. 
All right, so here comes the solution for five. If you haven't tried it yet, pause the video now. So you should get one answer. It's a perfect square trinomial. So you got the same quantity. You got 5x minus 4 and times 5x minus 4. And when you solve both of those, you get x equals 4 fifths. So there's only one solution on that one. On 6, again, if you haven't solved it, go ahead and do it. It's the difference of perfect squares. So you're going to get an x plus 5 in one quantity and x minus 5. That means there's going to be two answers, and you're going to get x equals plus or minus 5. Or you could write down x equals 5 or x equals negative 5. You need both answers for it to be correct. Okay, number 7 and 8. Again, pause the video and you try them. Look for a GCF. Determine how many terms there are. Go on from there. Factor them completely and then solve. Okay, here comes my solution for 7. Last chance to pause. You're going to get three answers because of the GCF. You're going to get x equals 0 x equals 3 and 1, th one half, or x equals negative 5 thirds. Of course, you could have negative 1 and 2 thirds there as well. On that one, you must have gotten an x out front of your two quantities. That x counts as a quantity by itself, right? Hold on, let me make that x look a little bit better. Something drug on my airliner and it didn't look right. There we go. So there's one, two, three quantities. All you have to do is set that one equal to zero. And look, it's solved. That's where the x equals zero is coming from. Okay, go ahead and try number eight. And yep, this time we got two answers. We did get the x equals zero because of the GCF out front we pulled out. But then it was a perfect square trinomial left inside. And when we got uh, 4x plus 5 times 4x plus 5. When you solve that, oh no, I think it must be 5x plus 4. I wonder if I made a mistake there. You know what, I'm going to take a second and I'm going to go ahead and do that. That answer is bothering me. Uh, I'm wondering if I, if I didn't factor that right. So, rather than send you off with a, a mistake, I'm going to check for my own. So, I'm going to pull out a 3x. And when I do that, I'm going to get a 16x squared plus a 40x plus a 25 equals 0. Now what's left inside there is a perfect square trinomial, right? And so I'm going to factor into two groups, two quantities. Okay, I've got the third quantity out front, that 3x. I'm going to get a 4x plus a 5 and a 4x plus a 5. Yeah, and I did have a mistake. We are going to get the x equals 0, like I said. The other x is going to be a negative 5 fourths or negative 1 and a quarter. I think I had 4 fifths down. My mistake. I apologize for that. There you go. Okay, so that's it for the video. If you need to watch it again, go right ahead. Mr. Lawrence signing off. Have a good day, everybody.